we're going to be checking out the 3-0 Game of Thrones Jamie Lannister 1-6 scale collectible figure. Jamie Lannister stands at exactly 12 inches tall. When you immediately get this guy out of the box, he comes wearing his Kingsguard armor, which looks spectacular. I think they did a fantastic job. Now you can remove the armor. I'll show you that in a second, and then we'll, I'll show you what he looks like with just the robe underneath. So there's a couple of different ways and options you can display him, but let's get a look at some of the armor detailing first. The armor has been painted here in a glorious looking copper color with all these little individual rivets that you can see making up the majority of the plating. Now the plating, none of it actually gets unscathed by this additional scroll work that on the white shoulder plates come across here in a glorious gold and in the copper comes across as the white. Now in the areas of the front plate, this area, the scroll work here is, is etched or, or uh, embossed into the... Here on the other hand, it's actually an elevated print so you can actually, running your finger across it, you can feel how this is sculpted and raised above the sculpt of the shoulder plate here. Both underneath his shoulder plates, as well as his skirt, is made up of these very intricate looking panels. And you can see here, it starts at what almost appears to be like a gold color, and then they've airbrushed the darker, almost brown areas, it's almost like a brownish gold, running on the scales of his skirt. The skirt is actually a rubbery uh, material, and underneath you can see more of that gold that makes up the majority of it. I think the paint is done extremely well, and I like that they've given it more of a worn look, as it be something that he would likely have worn frequently guarding the, the royalty of the King's Guard. Some of that scaling also carries itself over into the gauntlets that he wears on his forearms. You can see how that is uh, actually realistically strapped with the fasteners of keeping the harness, keeping the gauntlet wrapped around the under robe that he is wearing. Now the under robe actually feels more like a, like a faux leather. It runs actually from the top and all the way down to the bottom. And if you just remove or slightly move the skirt out of the way, the material underneath almost is more of a, a dirty canvas or burlap and they've stitched the interior of the leg but then they've also stitched or laced up the front. Now you will not actually remove nor would you have a need to remove the pants but small details like that, a detail you would not certainly see because the skirt is covering and robe are covering over top of it but it's nice that the little small attentions to detail here this dark cranberry color really pops also on the beige color of his exterior robe. Stitch work is done very nicely. I don't know if the camera hopefully is picking up, but there's a cross hatching to the actual burgundy, this cranberry colored fabric. Having this be only the second of the Game of Thrones pickups that I've done from 3-0, the other one being Tyrion Lannister. So far, I'm very happy with the head sculpts. The head sculpts look very accurate to the actors, and Jamie Lannister here is no exception. Now, certainly the characters do change over the course of the show, so maybe eventually revisiting a Jamie Lannister with the shorter hair and slight stubbled beard would be a nice touch. But in the meantime, this longer-haired Jamie, I think, showcases very well and does look like the actor. Um, they've put a slight bit of shading right underneath the eyebrow area. And actually, you can barely make it out, but there's a, a s apparent stubble that they've airbrushed the under areas of his chin. If I can slightly just tip it up, you can see a lot of that, that airbrushed stubble. Sculpting on the hair is also done very nicely. Yeah, it's a bit of a, like a darker brown that they've incorporated with the lighter chocolate colored brown. You get little peaks of blonde right at the front here. The majority of his head actually reads more of a lighter brown. The gloves here work as two parts, one being the main hand itself, and then at the bottom where the glove would be the additional excess, they've kept it as a separate piece. 
It does mean that the bottom area here of the glove does sit a little on the loose side, but when you are changing out the hands, you're really only just pulling out the hand socket, or pulling the hand from the arm socket, and then this will stay behind. This being separate, you will take this completely off, uh, and then when we eventually are taking off the gauntlets, when we are removing the armor, this will be very easily uh, able to be removed as well. An additional accessory that can be added to him with the Kingsguard outfit is he also has a belt complete with two sheaths, one longer for the sword, one shorter for the dagger. Both are exquisitely detailed here, giving a slight worn away look to the gold. Nice detailing there on the lower areas as well. The, the belt actually does have well, it doesn't have an actual little prong to it. What it does is they, they've they left a little lip here. When you slide the belt through, I'm just going to do this now and then I'll show you what it looks like on him. When you slide it through, that little notch, if you pull the belt forward slightly, that notch catches itself into the hole and it keeps the belt fitted. With the belt now harnessed around his waist, I did notice that there seems to be a lot of excess and I can't seem to find a place anywhere on the belt itself where there's an additional loop to feed through this excess. So what I ended up just doing was once I had the belt fitted to the notch where I wanted it on Jamie, I took the excess amount and I fed itself behind the actual belt and I just ran it down that way. You can just adjust into place. And then you've got the still the holstered sheath on the one leg for Jamie, and then the, the smaller sheath at the back for his dagger. Running down his uh, weapons, he does come with a broad blade sword. Um, there is a little bit of black residual on here. Now that may not be for every single Lannister that you pick up, but uh, this particular piece was an early sample release. So I did notice that a little bit on the interior of his glove still had black paint that was slightly wet. Not only did I get it a little bit on my fingers, but I did manage to get it also onto the hilt of the sword. That may not be for everybody's copy, so I don't want you to think that there, there's an issue with paint. It was just, just so happened to be on the one that I had. So I did get a little bit of that black smudging on there. I could probably just try to remove it very carefully. Um, maybe not paint remover, but something something a little bit milder that I'm not going to take the paint actually off the hilt. The hilt is done nicely, though, uh, favoring almost more of a orangey gold color, while a more traditional metallic gold wraps around the bottom of the, the hilt here. So nice accenting on the one side, wrapped across here, um, and then more un untouched here on the other side. The sword is painted very nicely in a silver deco. And you can take the sword, of course, and it will slide very easily into the sheath. The other accessory that he comes included with is a smaller dagger. Instead, taking not cues from the hilt of the sword, it instead favors more of a traditional metallic gold for the actual hilt. The blade is still kind of that metallic silver, but a really nice touch on the dagger. You do have to be careful, though, with the dagger, because I noticed the sheath, if I just move his arm out of the way, the sheath for the smaller dagger is such a tight fit that when I would put it in, I would advise making sure you're getting a good grip of it, especially at the top handle. Don't push it from the top because you don't want to bend accidentally and snap the hilt from the blade. Always make sure that you're pulling it from or pushing it down from like the mid area of the hilt. One of the other things I noticed too is getting it out I've had a couple of times the hilt detach itself from the blade. It just looks like it pegs very easily into place. But be careful of that when you're pulling it. Don't pull it from the handle. Try to, on the other hand, pull it maybe like right around here to pull it out. To complete the look, Jamie Lannister also comes included with a, a cape that will attach to the top of his armor. There's these little notches here, which get their own very decorative metal metallic... Uh, design there. And I like that they've dirtied the fabric up slightly, not keeping it very pristine. So you've got a little bit of that brown smudging along the top there. But to attach it, what you're going to want to do is these little, these little looplets here, take the hook from the cape and attach it just to the one side 
and while you're holding, I find it's it's important to hold it because then it kind of keeps this in place while you get the other one in place. Hold them down with your fingers, and then I just I kind of just tuck it behind the plates of his shoulder armor. You can also kind of keep it more of a straight uh, draping, or you can spread it out. I kind of favor more like just a narrow drape. And there you've got Jamie in his completed his completed King's Guard armor. Jamie can also be displayed just with his robe. So what we will want to do is kind of just take off everything that we've just added to him. So take the cape off very carefully. You could keep the sword really in place if you want to. Just take the belt, unloop it, and remove that. Now currently his boots are plated. There's you can see that there's a front shin guard and, and calf guard. Uh, they also do give you regular wrapped boots for when he's wearing the robe. So what you would want to do is take this off. But I think the best thing to do first is start removing the actual armor and then you can add this afterwards. Best place to start, grab the hand or the forearm here and pull the hand out of the socket. And also while you're doing that, you can take the cuff off of the glove and go ahead and take the gauntlet for his forearm and slide that off. You can do that on both sides. Grab this and just pull the hand out of the socket. Take the bottom of the glove off and slide this off. Luckily, the shoulder plates aren't that difficult. There's just a elasticized cord. You can just slide those completely off. There's the interior of them. Go ahead and do it on the other side. Let's slide this off. And then we can go ahead and untie this is probably the more difficult aspects of it, especially if you're not good like myself with knots. But you want to untie this and then remove the plate. Luckily, the skirt, as well as the top plate here, is one piece. The hardest aspect, though, is taking it and these little looplets here. I try, if anything, to try to keep those still attached. It's not the easiest, mind you. And while you're also at it, you can go ahead and take the head off. There we go. And very carefully try to take this off without detaching those looplets because that will be if anything the harder aspect get this around the forearm here and once you get it off the one side slide it down the other um, I can't stress this enough though like these little looplets are so small try your best to keep the cords still looped through them because you're going to have one heck of a time trying to get those back through unless you have something like a pair of uh, tweezers or something small. To get the same look with the boots, it's actually the exact same method as taking the gloves off. Take the hands off first, so down here with the boots. You pop the boots off, then slide the shin guard off. And then the boots themselves, if I can show you, is all one piece. And then that just attaches itself to the ball joint located the stem of the leg. I have to admit, I like this look of Jamie as well, sporting this faux leather robe. Uh, without the armor now in place, you can kind of get more chance to see some of the really good detailing here on the stitch work, as well as these little individual flaps. The top of the robe has these like little ribbon tie tie ups. But if you actually, if you've seen any of the production shots of this Jamie Lannister, he's got the robe more so open. So accomplishing that, you just wanna, you can do this with as many or as few as you want. But you can take the ribbon and literally just un untie itself, untie the little knot here. And once you've got that out of place, pull it through the loop and then you can open up the jacket more so. Now you can open it up as much or as little as you want. You can open it all the way down if you if you so wish. Uh, certainly just depending on how you want to display the figure. One thing I have noticed though is by changing out the boots, I find the boots don't sit attached to the ball joints very easily. In fact, when you rotate the boot ever so slightly, it seems to be prone to popping itself off the ball joint. You can apply a little bit of more pressure, of course, to the leg itself, but it just doesn't seem to sit perfectly fine in there. In fact, changing out the gauntlets and putting in the shin guards and putting in the independent boots, let me show you what I'm talking about. 
These certainly, this is part of his armor, these attach much easier because they're attaching directly to the ball joint. You can kind of get a little bit more of a grip to it. But with the boots having so much enclosure, you kind of have to hold on to the leg and just push down. Sometimes it's successful, other times I find like the legs do, or the boots at least, don't really want to stay in place. And like with the Kingsguard armor, you can also finish the look for Jamie in his robe by adding the belt along with his sword and dagger. The only other accessory this guy gets, aside from the sword and his armor and stuff like that, is another interchangeable hand for holding one of the weapons. Um, it kind of gives you the option that both hands then could be gripping a weapon, while then the other defaulted hand is a more relaxed palm. Jimmy Lannister's articulation, he does have a ball joint in the head, but the ball joint sits at the base of the neck rather than having it at the, at the very top where the neck attaches to the head. So when you rotate it, you're only rotating it from the stem of the neck. Shoulders hinge outward, as well as a forward and back motion. He has a swivel at the bicep area, a double hinge in your elbow, and a rotation in the hand. His waist does swivel, as well as an up and down crunch. And for your legs, he has a forward, back, and out motion, a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, a double hinge knee, and a swivel uh, via ball joint in the foot. But yes, as you probably have seen already, that ball joint doesn't sit very well at all in the boot. So do you rotate it, but results may vary when you rotate the boot. You might find that that boot does slide off from time to time, which is, if anything, the one thing I would say is a detriment to the figure itself and is, is just the fact that I can't get the boots to actually sit properly into the sockets. You may fare a little bit better than, than I have, but I just find when I have them in the robe outfit, I just can't get those boots to sit properly into the sockets. The 3-0 Game of Thrones Jamie Lannister six scale figure overall turned out really good. Uh, when I saw initial online photos of this guy, I thought like the armor was going to be a big problem taking it off if I wanted to ever have him displayed in the robe. But as you saw in the video, taking off the armor is actually one of the more easier aspects of the figure. Keeping the boots, however, on him when he's in his robe can be a little bit more difficult and could really be the only strike I could make about the figure. I had a little bit of the issue with the paint on the inside of the wrist or inside of the hand, but I can't say that's 100% gonna be a problem with every single Jamie Lannister that uh, you guys pick up. Yours may not have that issue with the paint. I did notice it on mine, but again, mine was an earlier sample release, so it's a good chance that maybe there was just a few unfinished little paint and stuff like that that was sitting in the, the creviced areas. I hope, though, and that's the problem with sometimes six-scale figures, if we get this particular Jamie Lannister, I hope maybe that 3-0 will entertain the idea of giving us different incarnations of Jamie, Jamie Lannister, maybe with the shorter hair, the beard, and whatnot. I mean, so far we've only gotten one Tyrion Lannister. Maybe we may not get a bearded Tyrion Lannister, but the hopes are that 3-0 sees a potential and not only just gives us not only just one Tyrion, one Jamie Lannister, but maybe a couple of different versions of how these characters looked as the show progressed. Still a great looking figure, and with the upcoming release of this of the new season of Game of Thrones, I thought it was a fitting time to go and have a look at this guy. And he, I think he really turned out quite good. Uh, today we were checking out once again the Game of Thrones Jamie Lannister from 3-0. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button yet and join this channel. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. You won't miss future videos that are being uploaded. And as well, if you're a fan of 3.0, I've got a playlist that you can check out that has all the videos I've ever done for 3.0 that you can watch at your viewing pleasure. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.